Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Newman, and this is Ask Dr. Ben, where I'm going to try to answer your questions with coronavirus science. All right, so this question is from Ramona, age nine. How are you doing, Ramona? All right, and it's actually a cracking good question, as my wife might say. <laughs> um, uh, she wonders where coronaviruses came from and how old they are. Oh my gosh, yeah, really interesting. Fine, yeah. Um, and her brother says they must have come before humans, and she maintains they must have come after. Well, would it surprise you to know that scientists are divided on this very question? So, on the one hand, you've got the coronavirus genome. So this is the stuff inside. If you crack open that little spiky ball, there's a long string of RNA, which is just like DNA with a little tiny tweak all along it. Yeah, it's fine. Basically works the same. And the RNA will change over time because the virus is very sloppy. When it makes copies, it just uh, it basically YOLOs it, as uh, the kids used to say, and I'm sure you've never heard. <laughs> um, and after doing that, uh, the virus will have put in you know, maybe one or two mistakes uh, in each copy. You know, if it's in a doing badly, or it might actually get a copy right every once in a while, something like that. We think there's about one mistake per copy, na that neighborhood. Um, and so you've got a virus that will change at a particular rate. So if you've got a virus and it's two mutations different from another virus, you can say, well, two mutations, that's two rounds of copying. So how long does a round of copying take? And for a virus, it takes about eight hours. That's time for a virus to go into a cell and make more copies and then come back out and go into the next cell and sort of start the next round. So that's, yeah, like a minimum time. So two mutations could be as little as 16 hours or it could be as long as about mm, a week um, because not all mutations um, actually work. Like you can change some parts of a coronavirus and it'll still work. Like you could change some parts of any machine and it would still work. Like you could change the parts on the outside, you know, but if you try to change the parts on the inside that actually work and change them for a pencil or, uh, you know, some Tic Tacs, chances are it's you're not going to get a working machine. You're going to get some junk. <laughs> and I think that makes sense. So a lot of the changes the virus makes just result in a dead virus and it goes away. So while the virus makes a lot of mistakes, the, it only finds one that sticks about, um, yeah, about uh, one every two weeks, uh, something like that. That's roughly uh, the timeline we're talking. So all of this is a long-winded way of saying that if we trace back all the SARS coronavirus 2, we find that it's all the ones that you find in people go back to a common ancestor that's about just a little over a year old which is about when the outbreak started. So that's, yeah, for me, pretty good. But there are lots of other coronaviruses, as you know. And oh my goodness, yeah, so where do these come from? This is a really good question. Um, so what we can do is we can build a family tree of the coronaviruses. And we know, like if we were building your family tree, we would know all of your aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas all the way back to a certain point when people were bad at keeping records. And then we might have gaps in the tree and it would come down and it'd have you uh, at the bottom or you could run it the other way with your greatest, greatest, greatest grandparent at the other end. And that's fine too. <laughs> and we can do this for viruses. The thing is, with viruses, we only have a couple of leaves from the tree, and we're having to reconstruct all the branches of the tree. But we can tell from the leaves, from the sequence of each virus, we can tell roughly how many rounds of copying and roughly how much time they are apart. So the minimum amount of time we think it would take to make all the different coronaviruses in the world, with coronaviruses changing at their normal rates and doing all the weird virusy stuff they do, is about 30 or 40,000 years. The maximum, then 30 or 40,000 years would be back when there were humans and still, I believe the last Neanderthals, 
which is like a kind of caveman. I believe they were still around. So it could be them rather than us. Yeah, <laughs> they weren't uh, extinct yet, but humans had been around for a, a long time before that, uh, 100,000 years or something. But um, if you look at the longest possible uh, estimates of uh, how old the coronavirus family can be, these things go a lot farther back. Um, and coronaviruses have a lot of relatives in all kinds of crazy undersea creatures. And uh, they seem to be just in animals, not in plants so far. But um, boy, if there's an animal out there, uh, yeah, chances are one of those animals has been has had a coronavirus at some time. And so there is another school of thought that says that they might go back and they might have actually started out around the same time as all those different creatures started out. Like if the first creature that goes on to have two children, one of which goes on to become, you know, things like mollusks and um, insects like clams and bugs. And let's say the other one goes on to become things like a sea urchin or a person or a fish. Yeah, after many, many changes. All those changes are happening around 500 to 600 million years ago. And so there's the idea that, yeah, coronaviruses could have grown up along with living things. And the thing is, I don't think you'd be able to tell. First problem is that coronaviruses are made of RNA and not DNA. So DNA is like the more stable version of a thing that you can have. You've probably heard of a nucleus that has DNA in it inside your cells, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so instead of having a nucleus, coronaviruses just have one little string of RNA um, and it's wrapped up in that little ball and that's what they carry around. That's all of them. RNA, when it's just a single string, doesn't last all that long in the world. The virus does its best to protect it, but you're talking about a thing that is probably going to be fragmented and just gone into little tiny bits that you can't do anything with in a matter of weeks to months, you know, in, in the best uh, conditions. Um, whereas with DNA, in the best possible conditions, so submerged in a cave, encased in a little bit of limestone with no bacteria to eat it or other animals, and preserved at just a perfect temperature for constant all of time, we think you ought to be able to get DNA and be able to read it that's about 6 million years old. And if I remember correctly, I think they have read out DNA that's more than 1 million year old. Um, uh, and I think they've got even a little bit older than that from some kinds of plants. But beyond that, there's not enough DNA left or we haven't got a good way to see it. It's just broken into so many little bits. And um, the little bits of DNA aren't distinctive. They're, they're the same as the little bits of DNA from everything else. And so it's like Legos. If you just have a scattered box of Legos, it's hard to tell if they used to be the Lego castle or the spaceship or whatever. Um, except that with Legos, there are distinctive parts. You got the little laser cannons and stuff or like plane engines that are a pretty good clue. And with uh, RNA and DNA, all you have are A, C, G, and T, or A, C, G, and U is the version for RNA. So, yeah, you can't tell, but that's an excellent question, and that is a question that scientists debate. Um, and a lot of really clever people are trying to figure out if there's a way that they can actually answer this question. So. For now, yeah, the, the minimum answer would say that um, yeah, you're, you're right and your brother's wrong, and the maximum answer would say that your brother's right and you're wrong, and we can't tell the difference between the two right now, except to say that they're pretty old. Pretty old, yeah. <laughs> all right, so uh, that's all we can do on that at the moment. Um, but I really like that question. Oh my goodness, yeah, what a good question. So thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben, and uh, yeah, stay safe out there.